So in the last video I show you guys how to troubleshoot and uh, figure out which coil and spark plugs were bad and we changed that for cylinder number one. Now there is a little bit more stuff to get out of the way for the other cylinder and it's been about like four or six months that I did the first video so the other spur plug or the other coil are starting to hack up, but it fix, fix the problem for a while. But usually when one goes, you can expect the other one to start going. So we're gonna start taking stuff apart. And I'm gonna show you as we're going what you have to do to have access to everything and the little tip and tricks. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is remove this elbow out of the wire. So for this, we need a 516 socket. And then we're gonna have to remove this plug up here and that will make herself our job easier. Now to make this a little bit faster, I get the Halloman uh, 3.8 ratchet. Uh, I get the review about this, a review video, I'll post it in the description. First thing first, this plug, so just push at the bottom for the release of the lock here. This is what we're pushing right here. This is out of the way. Now I can take this cover off. And just pull it upwards. It's usually four clamps on there. I have to move this hose out a little bit. And squeeze this over. Just have to pry this over top of the hose. It's all slatted on this side. cover out of the way this is the two clips that it uh, it goes into and the two piece at the back here this is where those slides in so you pop this forward uh, upwards and then after that you just move it forward to get out of those two holes so now that we have this out of the way we have access to all of those coil on this side and all of those coil on the passenger side or the right side of the truck if you want to call it left and right now to do this job to take the coil out we need a 10 millimeter socket uh, you might also uh, want to get the swivel and an extension we're going to need dielectric grease to put on our spur plug. Uh, the spur plug that you're going to need is those one here. It's a 9055 or REC12WMPB5. This is a V8. Each ignition coil takes two spur plug. The ignition coil is a GN10352 one one b one so you need 16 spur plug and total and eight ignition coil the spur plug i show you in the last video how to remove them without having the spur plug socket now if you can put your hand on spur plug socket they have the boot in there i don't know if we can see that you have a rubber boot in there so that when you slide it on top of your spur plug your spur plug stays stuck in there so like that you can uh, after you unscrew it you can just lift your socket out and they're pretty deep in there so you'll leave, lift your socket out you're probably going to have the extension on there and then uh, the spark plug is again come with it if you want to see the other trick you have to watch the other video for just changing the spark plug number one I have, i'll put it in the description to make it a little bit easier on us i am lifting all of the locks on all the ignition coil that we have to do and so you have to push this red tab upwards so here's the tip for that so after you press the lock forward you have to press with your thumb into the center of the red lock here on the black part that will release your lock 
but they're too hard to pull and you don't want to put too much pressure on those wire we don't want to break this part or you'll have to do a harness so what we're going to want to do now is grab a screwdriver flat screwdriver with a wide zip a wide blade and then what we're going to do is put it and then twist it so you can pry it at the same time you might need to go on the side too or on each side to pry it but this is going to really help to move this plug without breaking anything or damaging your two wires going to it okay one thing that i forgot to mention to you guys is when you're prying make sure that you just pry on that plug here because uh, the thing is you can still pry on the coil plastic here so you want to make sure that, that this is not what you're trying to pry here but actually just on the plug itself right so just the edge of the plug so you'll see kind of double plastic sticking out just pry on the first layer on the right side or passenger side of the engine you can use your ratchet with a deep 10 mil will make your life way easier to loose up those coils now one of the first tip i can give you for a passenger side is this harness here for the computer harness remove this little tree thing there that uh, hold the harness and plate into this bracket so this you just wiggle it back and forth and up and down and uh, you'll be able to take it out without breaking it and now it will give us access push it like this for cylinder number six bring it back for cylinder number eight now that we're at the last coil so cylinder number eight this is on the passenger side you have your two coolant holes going to your ether core inside your cab here so we need to actually pry this bracket apart like this and then now you can move those out of your way For the left side or driver's side of the engine, now it's just a matter of uh, finding out your angle to do the coil, but you can do them all without having to remove anything. I would be really careful with this hose here. It's plastic. You don't want to end up bending it. If you bend it, it's pre-bend. If you end up bending this, it's going to snap. Uh, those are a whole on a very small harness so you could you can only connect it to one coil so you're good to disconnect everything at once and remove all your coil and go to the spur plug after but uh, when you get to side or places of the engine like here where we have to push this out of the way one way and another in order to have access to the coil i would just do one at the time here because you don't want to end up throwing dirt into the spur plug cylinder and you're going to want to wipe everything all the dirt around it before you put your new coil in the coil boots are flexible yeah, there's no problem for you to bend everything to make your coil go underneath the component to remove it all of there unless you measure seven foot and you're build like a gorilla with 10 foot arms you are going to have to get into the engine compartment and this is where you can put your knees and your ends there so you can be on the shroud here at front of the engine onto the rad you can also be on the shroud above the fan here i would not pass this pipe here and go on to the edge because now you can crack it. But if you're anywhere on this side, towards the front of the engine above this pipe here, you're good to put your knees there. Now there's also a fuse box 
right here there's no problem to put your knees on there that's mounted nice and solid or onto the battery uh, there's there's no other ways to have access to everything that's deep in here so uh, yeah good luck <laughs> if you're going to have everything open for a while or you have to walk away or it's very windy then I would recommend to put rags into your intake here and into your uh, your hair box now don't forget to remove those before you put that pipe back the elbow back on here so you don't suck those rag into your your engine now it's not windy for me here today and I'm planning to be doing this all in one shot and not walk away from this truck so I'm not bothering now that everything is removed all the coils are removed and uh, their area around them is all clean it is time we can start now removing this spare plug you'll need the extension for that now when we're going to lift those out of there we'll have to lift the ratchet undo the ratchet from the extension lift the extension as high as we can hopefully we can see the socket there and then we'll have to remove the extension from the socket because we won't have enough room to do that in one shot or you can use those flex extension for each spur plug you remove i would uh, replace it with the new one right away do not leave any of those holes open because you don't want dirt going into your engine now to put your spark plug back in never use your ratchet wrench there or a ratchet or whatever put everything by n you want to make sure you don't cross thread anything so if you start turning like this here and then now it's going smooth but if it would catch and not start not turn properly or be hard then I would back up until that's a mechanic trick here you can do that with both too you back up until you kind of feel a little jump and then you can start turning the right way and then uh, clockwise and then you're sure that the treads are starting properly so now after you put this in as far as you can with your end I would not use the air ratchet or electric ratchet. I just use a regular ratchet. I like that you can feel the pressure. I cannot tell you what torque they need to be at. I usually I'll just go until it's tight and then I'll probably go in another eighth of a turn or or sixteen of a turn. Just you you have to have the feel for this. Um and then uh, it's gonna be tight enough. So now I went all the way until it's tight, like free, free turning, like tight. And then uh, now I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure. So about yeah, need of a turn or a touch more. And then that's good enough. If you put any more pressure, you can break some treads or damage your spur plug or anything like this. So you want to make sure that you don't go too tight. Underneath the bracket and the coolant hose is going to your ether core and the AC going to your condenser. You're going to have to use this setup here. So ratchet, three inch extension, six inch extension, swivel, and then your socket, your 5.8 socket to remove the spur plug. And you're going to go above that little black bracket here with your ratchet. Your ratchet is going to be pointing in the, towards the center, towards the engine. Right, I'm not going to show you that because there's lots of swearing involved. One more trick for the passenger side here is if you move those two coolant lines towards you instead of pushing them against the firewall, then it's way easier to drop the extension in there. Now on the driver's side or the left side of the engine we're going to have actually just uh, for the back especially because there's not too much space so there's your socket and then the swivel 
and then a three inch extension. And that will give you enough space to be able to put your ratchet in there. Okay, now that we're done installing all the spur plug, it's time to install the coil. Now the plug goes towards the center of the engine, so on both sides. And what we're going to do that we didn't do when we installed the spur plug, because it's easier to do right now, so we're going to put a little bit of direct grease into the end of the boot here, and then we're going to squeeze it together like this. So just like this here, it doesn't need to be much. I'm going to squeeze it like this, and it just so that the boot makes a perfect seal here and there's absolutely no moisture it can go around your spur plug made them rot and have a bad connection so we're going to do that to all of the coil as we're installing them now remember that those are flexible they get their connection with the spring here this is why they're flexible uh, so you can flex them as you need it to install your boot in every cylinder the coils are all the same so it doesn't matter which one you install First, uh, don't turn the key of your engine when everything is unplugged because it's going to throw some codes for you. Um, okay, so yeah, everything should be done with the power off. Uh, I figure it, you know that already though. <laughs> so, alright, you can put a little bit of direct grease into the where the plug goes if you want to. And there's already a rubber boot in there that should seal everything properly. I suggest starting from the back where it's a pain in the butt and then working your way forward for each side of the engine. One thing to know though is if you put the, the grease into that connection here, it will make suction and be way harder to push in and when you go to take it off next time it will be harder to take off. Now nothing's going to rust in there so that's the bonus of it but uh, just so you know, so take your choice accordingly. On the driver's side, the ignition coil, the last bolt, you might need to use a small ratchet with a shallow socket for it. Always start all your hardware by hand to make sure you catch the first couple of threads easy. And then after that, you can use power tools. Now when you're all done installing all of your coil, you just push the plug back in like this usually yeah you can hear it click and then after that you push your lock in there we go and then you're done that part now just double check to make sure that all of your plugs are back in and all of your boat are tightened into your coil and then after that you can start putting your harness clip and your coolant pipe back together so a coolant pipe here we move them above the bracket they will go underneath so this one here first and then that second one like that and then we just have to reach for this bracket underneath here i don't know if you guys can see that here just like this and then we're Going to push this back together. Gonna need two hands for this. Need two hands because it needs to be twisted in an angle like this here in order to go in properly. Now we can grab our little uh, little wire harness bit to secure everything, and we have to put this back into this bracket here. Sorry, those were two end jobs, so I couldn't show you, but anyway, you get the gist of it there. It hooks up in an angle as well, so you have to kind of pry the harness a little bit and then push this right in. Now we just have to put our cover back on and our pipe. Make sure that there's no dirt that fell in there. If there is dirt, try to pick it up before you start anything or blowing uh, blow it up with the... Uh, hair dryer or a hair pump whatever you have to take the dirt out of here you can try to wipe it too or pick it up with your nails we're ready to put our cover back on so like when we take it off those two bracket at the end here they're lining up with those two arrow so we're going to have to line this up first 
maybe. See them by underneath? No, not really. So this will be a two end and the same uh, again, and then uh, we're going to have to put this pipe here in between this and the same time. After you're done lining up the back, I can put a little bit of pressure on this hose here to drop it. This will just slide in place. Make sure you go around your fuel cap here. If you line up around your fuel cap, there's a good chance you line up against this bracket here. You just push it until it clicks. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You might have to put your end underneath here and guide your guide your bracket onto your your hole here. Uh, there's enough space to put your end in there. All right, so now we're all clean in here. There's no dirt. There's a little bit of uh, oily residue, but there is not really any dirt in there. So we can put our elbow back in. The sensor part of it goes on top of your engine and then uh, the flex goes onto your hair box. So yeah, start by putting it on the hair box first. You might have to wiggle it or twist a little bit here. I'm gonna put this as far as we can and then now we can put it on top here. We'll have to bring the pipe forward towards us and then wiggle it down. This is down all the way. We're gonna tie it up our two clamps and then reconnect our sensor after. I guess we can reconnect our sensor right now. There's no problem for it. Just press it until you hear it click. Okay, so now everything is connected, everything is Put back together, make sure you don't forget any tools in there, or if you unhook anything else, make sure that it's rehooked. But uh, this is the gist of it. Now we just have to start the engine and hear it purr. There's a uh, 179,000 kilometers. It's actually the first time that I, uh, I end up doing the, all of the spur plug and ignition coil on it. You can see here there's no no check engine light on there everything is good and the engine is purring so if this YouTube video will help you at all please make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video It is recommended to change your spark plug every 100,000 kilometer or 120,000 kilometer. So yeah, I didn't do that good about it, but as you can see, I still get the job done. It's just, uh, I get a couple check engine light before I did it. Right?